Seasonal greetings, everyone. Today is 25 December 2020. Um, it's just um, it's an exciting moment. It's a great, wonderful day. Um, I'm I'm personally, uh, I personally, I'm happy that uh, we are about to experience the end of a, a year and the beginning of a new year then this is a wonderful thing to every single person so matter of fact along uh, from the beginning of the year everyone has a um, we had plan we had um, expectation and all and uh, most people achieve some could not achieve some did lead you but the fact that we have life to continue is a good thing. It's something that we should appreciate God for. You know, um, this afternoon, I just want to break this word to you because uh, while I was uh, checking YouTube, I saw a lot of clips, saw a lot of video. Um, they call it debate between a Christian and a Muslim. So where you have uh, this particular man, uh, what is his name again? Doctor Zaki, Doctor Zaki Nike, who comes on, um, who make a program, making debate about Christianity and uh, Muslim, and most of the things he said, he uh, find a way to discredit Christianity, and some of the things he uh, he also uplift Christianity. Now, one thing I've understand in life is that you don't learn from one single um, direct way. We are like, you know, from people who are from Africa, Nigeria especially, you understand that as a person, you don't watch a masquerade from a, 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 um, a particular standpoint. If you want to get a full clip of a masquerade, you watch around, okay, that is all. That is what it is. We learn from people who are Christians, who are real Christians, and we learn from people who are not Christian. Because God is so wise in his in his doings that even from the mouth of an, an animal, God could speak to another human being. And he said one time as well that if I found no one, I could, he got created man to worship him. And he said, if I find no one to worship me, I can actually raise up a stone to replace a man to worship me. So, there is actually nothing God can not do. It's quite unfortunate that at this time, most people are still confused about there is God or there is no God. Did man just, or was man made from existence uh, or man turned from ape to man or think all kind of things like that, you know? It's quite unfortunate that people still believe all these things. But what I want to say is uh, the man called Dr. Uh, Zyke or so, I've watched a lot of pastors, a lot of people come around and those people, they could, they could not resist what the man was saying because the man is a person, he hardly gives you a chance. Once he see that you know something, he will not give you the chance to express what you have because his motive is not to learn. His motive to make sure do everything possible to discredit Christianity and win people from the Christian uh, side to the Muslim side, which is not a good thing. A, a real believer, a, a real Christ believer, what you do, you don't force people, you don't uh, kind of uh, sharpshoot people into making them Christian because you don't actually make a man a Christian. No man has the power to make any man a Christian. It is God that convinces, that brings people to himself by himself. That was why Jesus Christ said to Peter, what you know, this revelation you got about me, it's not about your study. It's, it's not just your knowledge. Don't think it just came. No. If the Father have decided not to reveal it to you, He will not. 
So the fact that the father review it to you is because the father have interest in you. So when you come to God and God have interest in you, God will reveal things to you. Now, we have the Bible. Let me come to the Christian side of it. Many of us, we read the Bible. Just like this Dr. Zyke, uh, Nike, uh, uh, yeah, he reads the Bible. The Bible is a book. Everyone can read. As long as you go to school, you know how to pronounce, you know how to read. You can read the Bible. And you come out and tell people, just like we have in the church, we have billions of churches around. But the issue is how many people truly know the Bible. Now, I watched this man, Dr. Nike, uh, Z um, Dr. Zyke, come around to tell people that I know the Bible. As a matter of fact, in one of his videos, he said, Being a Christian, me, uh, knowing about Christ. And he said he is more of a Christian than the real Christian because he knows about Christ. That is an error. The fact that you read theory doesn't make you... As a matter of fact, there are a lot of people who must have watched my videos online. Now, when someone said, wherever they see my video, they say, I know that guy. I've watched his video, but do you really know me? Have you met with me one-on-one? -on -one? Have we talked to each other? Have you really seen me? Do you know where I'm from? Do you know my parents? Do you, what do you know about me? You don't really know. I, I have friends around here who live around me. They will say they know me, but they don't really know me. To know a person, to know a person, the, the, the same word, knowing a person, it's like a man and a woman having a sexual intercourse. Meaning, I can get into you. It's the word no is not just a, a, a kind of uh, no. The, the word is not just like a kind of flexible word because you can pronounce it means you know person no. To read the Bible about Jesus is, a, is, a, is one thing. And to know Jesus is another thing. Now, I will say this. The Bible that we read, the Bible that everyone reads, is like a manual. Or, or rather, let me say, it's like a, a map leading to a destination. And now, let me say this to you. The fact that you are having a map doesn't mean you are actually re at the destination. You can have a map for 80 years in your possession. If you never really take out time to try out, to locate the ending of the, of, of, of the, of the destination, you are just a man possessing the map. But you actually don't have experience. What the destination really look like? Many have Bible. How much does it cost to get a Bible in the market, in the bookshop, on Amazon? The fact that you can, uh, you cram the Bible in your head. The fact that when someone say, uh, "For God so loved the world," you say, uh, 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 you quote the quotation for him, John three sixteen. Before the, the fact that you know those quotation does it really mean you will know anything about God or Jesus Christ? Now I'll read the passage for you that will shock you, because many people actually read the Bible. They fight themselves with the letters in the Bible. No, that they don't really know a thing about God. Now let me show you something. In in John chapter 5, verse 39, here is what he said. John chapter, uh, chapter 5, verse 39, he said, For in them, he said, ye, ye search the scriptures. For in them, ye think ye have eternal life. 
and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye may have life. This is human being. This is human being for you. Now, I read, I read another passage for you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. He said, the, uh, this is Peter that was speaking. He said, the letter kill it, but the spirit giveth life. There is a letter, there is a Bible which is just a letter. And there is a Bible which is the spirit. Not until you come to that level, to this understanding that the book which you actually see, which you bought in the market, they are two. But to you, you just bought a single book of 36 pages, uh, 36 uh, chapter uh, verses. I mean, chapter 6, uh, 36 uh, uh, chapter. You think you just bought just that book. But no more that that book you bought are two. There is a physical one, there is a spiritual one. The physical one, you read. But there is an external force, which is called the Holy Spirit, that will come and take you into the, 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 the invisible one. It is in that spiritual copy of the Bible that is where you see what is written in the physical one. Because in the physical one, where the Bible say a word, to you that word is what it is. There is no other definition to it. Now, in the spiritual realm, in the, in, 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 in the, in the spiritual, in the uh, invisible copy of the Bible, when the Holy Spirit takes you through it, you will discover that that single word can last you for your entire, it can actually last for, for entire generation. That single word, you can deal on that single word for a very long time. This is just a word that you just read. Naturally, you say, I, I already know, I know this one. No. The Bible is way bigger than this earth. But the problem we have as human beings, we read letters. Without first the assistance of the Holy Spirit in us, we believe we can do it. We believe when we read the letters, then we know Christ. That was why Christ said, you read the Bible. Thinking that you will find eternal life in it. So that you will not come to me. So that you can bypass me and do your own thing. But you don't know that the Bible is talking about me. The Bible is talking about me. So if you really need this thing that you want, you have to come to me. You can read the Bible for all you care. You will never get it. Because what you seek is not in the Bible. The clarity you seek is in Christ. Except the Holy Spirit take you through that journey. You will never even know where to start. God is so smart. Don't forget, God created Adam. Gave Adam so much power. God created Lucifer. If all this fell... What makes you think that God will make that same mistake again? No. Whatever you need is in Christ, not in the Bible. The Bible is just a guide. This is what people don't understand. This is why a man like uh, Zacchaeus Zac Zac or whatever his name is, uh, uh, Zacchaeus, will come and said, I know the Bible. I know Jesus. Do you really know Jesus? Brothers and sisters, don't be confused. There is more to these things you think you know already. As a matter of fact, you've not even started yet. There are a lot of people in the church today 
when you ask them, do you know Christ? Before you finish asking questions, they will answer you and say, I know Christ, I'm a Christian. We are not talking about the word Christian. We are not talking about you going to church. Or I call it church assembly. This is not what we're talking about. Knowing Christ is you having an experience about the person of Christ, not reading the Bible about Christ. It is easy to read about a person, but it's more difficult to know that person. Because you knowing the person is not even uh, you seeing the person. There is difference between seeing and knowing. You can see a person without knowing the person. There are a lot of people around me here. I see them daily, but I don't know them. When you want to talk about no, you are talking about communication. You are talk talking about relationship. So not until you establish communication, relationship, and begin to have experience of that person over and over again, you don't know that person. But do you really know God? Do you really know Jesus? They said Jesus is not the Son of God. And I heard the other man who said that uh, if uh, Jesus is the Son of God because, or if Jesus is God because he was born of a woman without a man, then Adam is a greater God because Adam was created without a man, without a woman. The Bible is a spiritual book. Most of those things you will read don't think you understand. Because when you come to God with a mindset of argument, you want to argue. God doesn't really have that time to come and see with you. I mean, the Holy Spirit. Not God. The Holy Spirit doesn't really have that time to come and sit with, with, well with you and start to argue with you. The Holy Spirit teach. The Holy Spirit review. He doesn't argue. That is why I had an encounter one time and the Holy Spirit spoke to me once. I was waiting for confirmation, clarification that he will say again. But I tell you, there was another voice at the background speaking to me continuously. Now, if God didn't help me, I would have failed. Because I, I God now referred refer me back that God only speaks once. So it's left for you to hear. Then I understand that whatever I was hearing after that first one, is no longer God. And that first one contradicts the, I mean, the second one, the second one and the other voices contradict the first one. So you have to be smart. I pray the peace of God be with you. I've said in some of my videos, seek God for yourself. Seek Christ for yourself. We are living in the time in the era where shepherds are not looking after themselves alone, they are even thinking how to extort from the sheep to take care of themselves. So you have to be smart. We have a lot of wolves around. Because if you are not smart, you see people like uh, this uh, Zach, uh, Zach here, they will they will destroy your faith if you ever had one before. Because what the church preached now is what you will get from God. How to get be enriched, how to get money from God, how to get healing from God. What is just what you will get from God, what God can give you. No one is telling you how you can establish a relationship between you and God. And there are passages in the Bible where a man like Zechariah can come out and use them 
against your faith and you will fall. I tell you the truth. You will fall. You have to sit down. First, you have to understand that the Bible, the book you see, there is a bigger Bible in you than the book that you see. Not until you learn how to read from the Bible in you, you will continue to walk in error. The Bible in you is the Holy Spirit. It's there at the table of your heart. Not until you learn to, to, to install You will continue to be a victim. I pray that God will help you. Try as much as possible. The truth is within you. The truth is in you. It is left for you to explore them out and use them for your good. The kingdom of God is not about you, you, you. It's about them, 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 them. That was why Jesus Christ said to Peter three times, feed my lamb. It's about them, 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 not you. If you go to, if today now you see a lot of people, this one say I'm a prophet, that say I'm a prophet. You look at their lifestyle. This one say I'm an apostle, I'm this and that. Look at their lifestyle. In those days, you won't find a man like John the Baptist looking for her to get a private jet, looking for her to get a donkey, because a uh, cause donkey then was the private jet. You won't see a man like Elisha looking for her to build houses, make half cars. At the time, the Bible said a woman saw Elisha and said, this man is a man of God. Let's build him a house. Elisha was not even thinking about what to get from that woman. He said, what would I give to this woman? To even think about me, what will I give to this woman? It's people who don't have faith in God that believe that let me capture this earth and acquire as much as I can before I leave. But when you know Christ, you understand that. You don't have to think about those things. Because those things doesn't matter. The Bible says, don't think about tomorrow. Is that word is significant. Don't think about tomorrow. Meaning you shouldn't be running about the things of the world. Let tomorrow, God has already made provision for that day. He said, he that water it shall be watered also. Except you are not watering. If you are not watering, then, then you should be scared of your tomorrow. That is why you need to acquire private jets, acquire houses, acquire and uh, make uh, have schools because you want to. Uh, you, you are protecting your future. You don't have faith in God making the bright future for you, so you are afraid. You now want to, you have to acquire all those things to make sure that tomorrow you don't fall. But if you have faith in God, you will know that God will always show himself. That was why he punished the Israelites. Who, he said, take it, but don't keep it tomorrow. Some of them were so greedy, like the prophets and the pastors and the apostles of today, they went to hide some food. They call it smart, but God only knows who is smart. So, brethren, strengthen yourselves. Because right now, we don't have the apostles, we don't have the pastors, we don't have the uh, prophets to strengthen us. So, we strengthen ourselves through Christ in us. Don't wait for any man. Don't wait for your pastor. Strengthen yourself. There is God in you. Pray to God to reveal himself to you in you. Reveal himself to you in you. There is God in you. Don't let any man deceive you. Because they can't help you. They can help you. 
they only weaken your faith to allow people like uh, uh, Zaki come around to rip you off. Don't let no mass weaken your faith in God. God is real. God lives. And I pray that God bless you and cause his light to shine upon you. Cause his face to shine upon you and give you that understanding that you need. Not the understanding that you seek because you don't even know the right understanding to seek from God. God will give you the understanding that you need to actually know him. In Jesus' name, amen.